Welcome to what was a very frustrating episode of Rivals to Record, episode number 27. Now, the reason it was frustrating wasn't no, so necessarily because of the two cars I had to drive, which were two very interesting machines from the 1970 racing scene, the Chaparral 2J, or the Chaparral, hopefully I'm saying that right, which was a fan-powered car in 1970. So it had great downforce and was very good at handling for its time. But, on Toyota's side, we have the 7. I love that name, just simply the 7. It's a, it's a small little thing with a lot of punch, nearly 800 horsepower in a car that small. It's crazy times. But no, what made it really frustrating for this episode was where we were driving. As requested by the Scotian Racer, I was on the Ascari Full Track Circuit, or Ascari Raceway as I tend to call it. Now... Ascari Raceway, for those of you who don't know, is a test track essentially in located in Spain. It's one of the la largest tracks that is in Spain and is largely served as a testing track and can be used as like a race day thing for people who have the money who are willing to spend and drive some cars around and whatnot. <clears throat> the frustrating bit of it is that it's a very demanding and very challenging track. It's... On a, and honestly, it frustrates me more than I enjoy driving it, to be perfectly honest. Uh, the laps that you're seeing here are just the laps I cut out. I just wanted to focus on the, the clean laps. Now, I had to put some, uh, I had to put the driving line on because I couldn't, I was just having so much trouble with this. I was going, I was all, usually driving way too fast or just going off the track and it's just, it was a bit of a mess. So I had to do this for my sake and I usually don't do it that often for Gran Turismo 6, but, you know, it was the case for this time around. Uh... Especially when you've got a small little car that's got nearly 800 horsepower here that's very fidgety and, you know, it doesn't take too much for it to suddenly lose balance and or slip up somewhere. So you just, you have to be very careful with it. Which I was definitely trying to do, you know, with uh, keeping above a, a gear in certain cases, which was a way to try to somewhat counteract it, but, you know. That, but yeah, it's just it's a it's a tough track. It's really is, and honestly, it's a track that I don't tend to drive very often, just because I don't have a lot of luck with it. But you know, as far as I know, the real life Ascari, the the fastest thing is I think you they'll let you drive if I I know there's a there is a way to drive your own vehicles I believe, but I think the fastest thing they've got they got like an open wheel car of some sort. I don't know the exact one for off the top of my head. But then they got some more, you know, more track-styled production vehicles as well, and that kind of stuff too. So, as a way to kind of balance it in some form or another. Uh, but yeah. So the Toyota 7 here did a 1 minute 44.515. Uh, the thoughts are on the car is that it's a bit twitchy when you, if you're uh, not careful with it. Uh, it's definitely fast. It easily accelerates up to speed, and it's very nice to drive when everything's all balanced. But then, you go to the Chaparral 2J. The 2J is a little bit easier around a track like this, especially because it only has three gears. And because this thing still makes a lot of power, I think it's still at least over 600 or something. I should have checked. This thing is still really fast. And it's fan-powered, so it, it has greater... Not just greater aerodynamic pull, but, you know, greater downforce as well. So, and in fact... You can't actually adjust the downforce of this car in the settings like you can with the Toyota 7 or most other cars. Mostly because the fan power basically means you don't really need to do that, so... Excuse me, but basically though... Having these longer gears, and you know, not as many of them, kind of did help in a lot of ways for, with the 2J. Because it just gave me a car that's a more balanced, more controllable to drive, and just more forgiving in a way, especially on a track like this. I mean, it took me a while to get a good lap on this. I mean, this lap that I accepted is an is lap 8, which is, you know, ridiculous. But once you finally get it get it down, the 2J is not a bad car to drive at all. It's it's just it takes some time getting used to, especially on a track like Ascari here, but yeah. Ascari to me also just I get it's a test track, and it also just but it just doesn't really feel like one. It just feels like it's a bunch of uh, road connected to some somewhere in what feels just basically like an open field. It it doesn't have that test track like field to me in terms of environment. Around the track, definitely for sure, and 
you know, when you get up to this point, sure, sure why not? But apart from, but the rest of that, it's, you know, it, it feels quite a lot more barren. But you know, that's just how my personal feelings are. But yeah, the, the 2J here that I was able to get it to a 1 minute 44.179, and it, you know, I personally, I saw that as a time it would have probably been capable of doing. It was a nice car to drive if once you got it down, and yeah, it just edged out the, uh, the Toyota 7 by a few second, by a few tenths, I should say, sorry. But yeah, that's, other than that, though, that's going to do it for this episode. I know it's a bit of a short one, I'm afraid, sorry, but hopefully you'll know why. But uh, next episode will probably be more down back to business, because not only have I got two, you know, regular road cars, it's on a track that's a lot, I'm a lot more familiar and a lot, I'm a lot more, you know, can get used to driving. But that'll be for then, so stay tuned for then, and as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.